Pork shoulder. What do you know about pork shoulder, Emil? I know everything. There's a lot of fat on it. Are you going to question my knowledge <laughs> on pork shoulders? <laughs> of course I am. Because you're a little bitch. <laughs> So the first thing you do, you take off all the How sissies. fucking dare you! <laughs> take off the excess fat. Just go around nicely. Get all these bits off. Most of this fat's on. It's nice to leave a little bit on there. You can just lightly season all over the pork. What are we making, by the way? Making the grill hot. So what we are making, we're going to do pulled pork. You didn't even know what it was. I didn't even tell you. I just said you pulled pork. You didn't tell pork. me it was pulled pork. I didn't. Cool thing about pulled pork, there's so many ways to do it, but the best way is to keep the meat whole. And then once it's cooked, obviously, pull it apart. But if you cut it into small chunks, it doesn't turn into pulled pork. It just mushes down. Mm. That's why it's very important. Pork shoulder is a very good cut for it. Another good thing about pork shoulder is that it's cheap. Well, it's underrated. At least it's not overrated. <laughs> like you. Excuse me. So there we go. I've got a grill on behind me. Best thing about this recipe is that it's super easy to do. Mm. There's like a few ingredients and you hardly even have to chop them up. You put it all in one pot and you leave it overnight. So, next day, Dinner time, hang a langer. The best thing about raising stuff along is that you can chop the veggies up really big. You don't have to worry about them. Garlics, give them the old crush. Onion. You can crush them onions, too. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, I'm gonna call this one crushed onion pork. Oh, How about that for a name, eh? Love a crushed onion. <laughs> Take that, get the seeds out. The apple is going to break down really, really quickly. If you didn't know, apple and pork, absolute classic. Well, of course I knew that apple and pork are a great combination. You could have said they're a classic, like bears and honey. You know why bears like honey so much? Because no money, no honey. <laughs> and those motherfuckers are loaded out here. And then, they just sleep half the year. Cameraman, hook me up. Back to talking about sealing the meat. What it does, it keeps all the juices in. It draws out the sugars around the meat and it caramelizes them. So you get like a nice meaty sweetness. Back to prep. I'm just gonna pile it all up on the board. Tomatoes, we got a little stock cube. Stick this on there like that as well. Nice. Rosemary. Hey. Dried chilies. I'm pretty sure they've featured in every single video of mine, and they will continue mm. for good reason. Aubergines. Yeah. I'm gonna do something really cool with them, mm. but they're going in whole. I mean, you're gonna see tomorrow. You'll probably see in about a minute. What well, do they call aubergines in America? I don't know. What do they call them? You know, eggplants. Yeah, they do. They actually do. You're right. I mean, you're never right, but this time you are right. What is an eggplant? I don't know why they what call it eggplant. Stock cube gonna throw it in at the bottom. Cumin. Cumin's like the only spice I'm gonna go in with because I don't want it to taste like a curry. I just want that little bit of cumin flavor. Oregano. Thyme. Have you got a thyme, mate? Have you got a thyme, Emil? Worcestershire sauce. Absolutely lovely. Oh, French sauce. sauce. Yeah, we've had this for a while. You didn't know about that? What? Tomato paste. Now, in with the meat. Try to wedge it in there. And now we're gonna go all around it with our veggie tables. Crushed onions, the way forwards. <laughs> Finish her off, bit of smoke paprika on top. The reason why it's going on top is because I forgot to spill it at the bottom. But that's a secret. Splash! There we go. Not too much wine, just a little bit. Water! Water! Mm, dilute that flavour. Dilute it right up. Dilute it? What's this guy talking about dilute? You, know, you don't even know what dilute means. Push it all down. This is gonna be fan diddly tastic. Low cook. 24 hours. Me and me will be back. Woo! So I woke up in the middle of the night and I forgot that I put this on. There was like a half eaten burrito on the table. And I thought all the smell was coming from that burrito. I was like, oh my god, this burrito smells amazing. Next day I realized it was that. 
So first thing you gotta do, you gotta skim off all the fat because we ain't getting fat out here. We done being getting fat out here, my friend. <laughs> we're not, they're not, they're not getting fat. Now that smells like what I'm talking about. <laughs> that is, that's exactly what you're talking about. Man. The fat's been skimmed, and now it's time to make dream work, teamwork. So I'm gonna do up three different recipes with this. I mean, if you're true gangsters, you'll follow every recipe. You do the whole thing. But obviously, you can just pick one from the video that you like and do that one. So the first thing you do, you gotta remove the meat. Look at that, it's just absolutely raring for it. No effort, pulls yeah, apart. It is falling apart. Or you could say, pulling apart. Fork mm. aside, one trick when you do something like this, whilst you're preparing it, just cover it, because the air starts to dry out the meat. So you wanna keep the moisture in there. It's time to start on our on a gangster rice. This is what the aubergine is for. So you want to take it off. Look at that, squidges. Pale green, that was dark before. Yes, yeah, I didn't expect it to do that actually. Looks a bit like a dog's dinner, those vegetables. <laughs> They're gonna be scrumdiddly unshut. Get some, all the veggies out, straight away. Keep it, oh, it's a little bit hot. Am I man enough? I'm not man enough. Get your sauce in the pan. It's gonna go straight on the stove and start reducing down. So run your knife through all this veg, and this is gonna make, literally, the tastiest rice you've ever seen. Why don't you stick to running your knife through your veg instead of running your mouth to me, you know? <laughs> Straight in, mate, straight in. Don't mess around. Now veg cup, so smooth. Huh? Rice, just pour it on top. Probably gonna go about 100 grams there. A little bit of salt, a couple of fennel seeds. It's gonna make it really, really fragrant. Take some of your sauce whilst it's thin and just pour it on top like that. So I'm using sushi rice in this because that's what the cool kids use. You just want the water slightly covering the top. That's it, done. So Emil, you're gonna have to turn this on because it's all in Korean. Number two, this one's probably the easiest option you could go for. Linguini, sexy sexy. Who doesn't like linguini? Nobody doesn't like linguini. Straight in the pan. Of course, a little bit of salt in the water. Pasta's cooked. Yeah. Here we go. Just run some cold water over it. Stops the cooking process. Has anyone ever told you you've just got a face that you just want to punch? <laughs> Has anyone told you before? <laughs> You're a fucking mug! You want the sauce, super thick, so max flavour comes out of it, and also it coats the meat. This meat is going to be like a sponge. As soon as that sauce goes on it, it's just going to start sucking it up. You ain't got the thickness! <laughs> what we do, you taste it and you're like, does it need salt? It may need salt, it may not. It depends how much salt you put in it. In this case, it does need a bit of salt. Help it out. I've only got three grains of pepper left. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Whilst we wait for the thickness, we're gonna check the rice. <laughs> I think your rice cooker's broken, Mill. Finally got the thickness. It just coats the spoon real nicely. That's what you want. You can take like a whisk and crush it up a little bit. And that just goes all over your pork. So now's the time to stop spooning and start fork. <laughs> so my like personal opinion on pulled pork, I don't like to break it down too much. I like to have nice big chunks in there, you know? Like how Emil's nose is gonna look in about five minutes, his rice cooker's broken. So I'm gonna stick this in the pan quickly. Oh, the bottom of it's cooked. Well, yeah, it's not quite there yet, so it's gonna go in the pan. Lid, very slow heat, and that's gonna take about, I reckon like five minutes longer. Now it's time. I'm a big fan of this brown rice. So if you make your spatula wet, then the rice won't stick to it, and then you can flatten out all your rice. And also, don't forget your bamboo. Pulled pork, all up in there. Have you ever had a pulled pork kimbap before, Emil? I have not. Neither have I. Mill doesn't like this stuff, but he's gonna learn today. I like that. in kimbaps. Sriracha. Now, option number two. It's our pasta course. A little bit of olive oil. You a Baz kind of guy, Mill? Uh, some days. Okay, straight up. 
You don't want too much. You don't want it to overpower. You just want that little hum. Back to forking. Because you know what they say, if you ain't forking, you ain't forking. <laughs> so this probably being the easiest option, but it could be the nicest option. You never know. Me and Emil are about to find out. Let's offer up with the pork. Level three, you can take some fresh mint, give it a good old rogering. Bring onion. It sort of reminds me of a risotto. Wow, which is, I'm happy with that. That's what I want. Straight onto the middle of the plate. I'm gonna finish her with our lovely herbs. Fresh yogurt. Just put a couple of dollops on here and there. How often do you get to see a spread like this? You got like a Korean style. This is gonna be, I'd say like Middle Eastern style here. Mm. And then you got Italian style in front mm -hmm. of you. It's an interesting way to do many different things with pulled pork. First things first, I'm gonna try this pulled pork on its own. Oh, it's good, it's got some heat, it's like got some rich flavours, texture of the meat. It's the thing with pulled pork, it looks like dog food, <laughs> but it Do tastes right. amazing. Wow, that's exquisite. That works perfectly. That's crazy good. Absolutely crazy. You need it all day. Oh no! I pay for that. Okay, next up. And I thought that kimbap was good. Mm. Completely different flavour. Completely different. You got that mint, like freshening it up, mm. the yogurt, and that rice just packs such a punch to it. Wow. I didn't think the flavour would be that different. Jesus. That's amazing. Really, really good. The vegetables are so mushy, like you don't even notice them in there. That's how you get your five a day, mate. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's good. Wow. That's real good. This pork is literally, it's just so juicy. The Italiano, my personal favourite. Completely different feeling, completely different flavour. Okay, hold the phone. Alright, round two. Cheese. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. Mmm. Game changer. So, ratings. I say first the rice. Okay. Kimba. Yep. And then pasta. And the opposite. What? First, second, third. Alright! <laughs> Swap a Rooney, man! And remember, when life gives you lemons, have a free <laughs>